Hi everyone, my name is Brittany J. Jones. Due to Mimi G's current schedule, she has asked me to step in to record the sew alongs for her new Simplicity pattern. Simplicity 8994 and Simplicity 8985. In this video, we are gonna be sewing along with view A of Simplicity 8985. I hope to bring you that same Mimi G flair that we all know and love. So let's get started. Let's go over the pattern pieces that we will need to cut out to sew view A on Simplicity 8985. We will need to cut out piece three. This is the loop and we need to cut one. Pattern piece number five, this is the front facing. We cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. Pattern piece number eight, this is the skirt back. We need to cut one on the fold. Pattern piece number seven, this is the skirt front and we need to cut two. Pattern piece number nine, this is the skirt front facing. We need to cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. Pattern piece number four, this is the collar. We need to cut two on the fold of fabric and one on the fold of interfacing. Pattern piece number six, this is the sleeve and we need to cut two. Pattern piece number two, this is the bodice back and we need to cut one on the fold. And pattern piece number one, this is the bodice front and we need to cut two. If you have any questions about fabric, on the back of the pattern envelope, they have a list of suggested fabrics that would work great for this pattern. Once you have all of your pattern pieces cut out, you cut out your fabric and you transfer all of your markings, we can start sewing. To begin, we're going to start working on our bodice front piece. This is piece number one. We are going to stitch a 5 8 of an inch stitch all the way along the neck edge and also along our dart legs. You should have transferred your dart legs and all your other markings. So again, we're going to stitch 5 8 of an inch right along the neck edge and along the dart legs. So let's go ahead and do it for both of our bodice front pieces now. All right, so I have stitched along the neck edge at a 5 8 of an inch stitch as well as along my dart legs. So now we are going to clip to this inner corner, but be sure not to clip through your stitching. Go ahead and do your other bodice the same way. All right, so I have both of my front bodice pieces stitched 5 8 of an inch along the neck edge as well as along the dart, and I've clipped to the inner circle, being sure not to clip through the stitch. So now we can go ahead and put this to the side and start working on our loop. For our loop piece, we are going to fold this lengthwise, and we are going to stitch at a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now that seam is commonly used in quilting and it's just a stitch that is not quite a quarter of an inch. So it's about a hair or two just short of being a full quarter of an inch. So my machine actually has that stitch programmed in it. So I'm going to give you a close up of what my needle does when I push that stitch. So you will see exactly how far my needle moves and hopefully you'll be able to move yours as well or at least get it up just a little bit shorter than a quarter of an inch to stitch your loop. So let's go ahead to the machine and and stitch our loop right size facing lengthwise. So right now I have my needle in the center position. You can see it right here. It's lined up right in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and push the button for the scant quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now this right here is the quarter of an inch seam allowance line. And by my needle bend in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and push the button so you can see it moves over just a little bit so the seam won't be quite a quarter of an inch. So that you see it just moved over just a little. So now it's not directly centered. So I'm going to put my fabric, I'm going to line it up with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now I'm going to go ahead and stitch the loop. All right, now that we have the loop sewn, we can go ahead and flip it right side out. 
All right, so I have my loop turned right side out. Now we are going to pin this on the outside of the right bodice. This right here is my right bodice and I transferred two circles right here on the bottom of it. So on the right side of it, I'm going to put the loop right at those markings. I'm gonna pin it in place. All right, so I just pinned my loop to the right front bodice piece on the outside of it, matching up with my circles that I transferred. Make sure that you have your raw edges even, and now we can go to the machine and baste this in place. All right, I have my loop basted on. Now we can go ahead and put our bodice fronts to the side and start working on our back. To begin working on our back piece, we are going to do a row of stay stitching along the neck edge of the back piece. And we want to go in the direction of the arrows. So make sure that you start at the shoulder and go to the center, then start at this shoulder and come to the center. And the stay stitching is done at a half an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do our stay stitching now. Now that we have the stay stitching done along the neck edge of our back bodice piece, now we can go ahead and put right sides facing and pin our fronts to back at the shoulder. Now that we have them pinned, we can go ahead and stitch our shoulder seams at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and end of your stitch. Go ahead and stitch your other shoulder the same way and then finish off your seam allowance. Now that I have my shoulder seams sewn and I finished off the edges with my serger, I'm gonna go ahead and press my seams toward the back. Now we can put our bodice to the side and start working on our collar. To begin working on our collar, you should have cut out two on the fold and one interfacing on the fold. I've already applied interfacing to one of the collar pieces and we'll begin working with this one first. So I'm going to put this one to the side. On the notched edge of the collar, should have transferred two notches up here. We are going to do a 5 eighth of an inch stitch right along this edge. So let's go to the machine and do a 5 eighth of an inch stitch right along this edge with the notches now. Back stitch at the beginning and end of your stitch, and again, this is a 5 eighth of an inch stitch. Now that we have it stitched at a 5 eighth of an inch right here along the notched edge of the collar, we are going to clip down to the circles that we transfer. Be sure not to clip through your stitching. So I'm just going to clip right to it. So you should have two clips just like this in your collar. Now we are going to go to the ironing board and we're going to press down the center of this at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. And since we just did that stitch at a 5 eighth of an inch, then we can just use that as a guide to just press this down. So let's go ahead and press it now. Now that we have it pressed, we're going to trim this down to 3 8 of an inch. Now we can move on to the next step. Now we're going to grab our other collar piece. We're going to put it right sides facing. And now we're going to stitch our collar pieces together, but we want to make sure that we leave these notched edges up here open. So we're just going to stitch along the side, this bottom edge, and this side, making sure to leave this open where the two notches are. So grab your pins and let's go ahead and pin in place. Now we can go to the machine and we can stitch at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way along this side, the bottom edge, and this side. Again, remember to leave this opening edge up here free. Back stitch at the beginning and the end of your stitch and we're going to be stitching at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Thank you. 
Now that we have the collar stitched together, we can go ahead and do a little bit of trimming. Now that we have it trimmed, we can go back to the machine and we're going to do under stitching to the facing. So you want to make sure that you have your seam allowance facing toward the facing and we're going to do under stitching as far as we can go. So let's go ahead and do under stitching now. Go ahead and do your understitching the same way and then we can move on to the next step. Alright, I have all of my understitching done. I went as far as I could. So now I'm going to flip out my collar. And I'm going to press this out. So now that we have it sewn, we can go to the machine and baste all the raw edges together. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, now that we have our collar basted together, now we can go ahead and pin it right sides facing to the bodice. So here is my bodice here. And I also went back and I remarked my circles because as I've been constructing it, um, my chalks, they kind of went away. So I've gone back and I have remarked. So if your markings have disappeared as well, go ahead and just remark them because it's important that we um, match up our circles and stop and start at the circles. So with right sides facing, You're going to match up the two notches right here with the two notches on the front of your bodice and pin in place. You also want to match up your circles. I'm going to pin the other one the same way, making sure that it's right sides facing. So just to double check that you have pinned your collar on the right way, the portion of the collar that we understitched, you want it to be right sides with your fabric. That way, once the garment is done, the understitching will be underneath the collar and not on top. So just double check to make sure you have your collar turned the right way. And now once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch it between the two circles at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to put my needle down right here at this circle. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and the end. I'm going to stitch the other side of the collar to the bodice the same way. All right, so I just stitched the collar right here to the front bodice. So now we're gonna put right sides together and we're going to stitch down the remainder of the neck edge. So you wanna go ahead and line up your notches and pin in place. Be sure that you keep the folded edge of the collar free and continue pinning. You should have a circle right here that matches up with your shoulder seam. So pin there. And we're gonna stitch all the way down to the dart. So I am going to pin out my dart legs, making sure that my pin is going through both of the dart legs. You should have two dots right up here at the top of the dart legs. I'm going to pin right through those. I'm going to pin the other side the same way. All right, now that we have it all pinned, I'm gonna to go to the machine. I'm gonna stitch it down. I'm gonna start here in the center and I'm going to stitch all the way down to the point of this dart. I'm not gonna back stitch when I get here. I'm just gonna tie my threads into a knot. I'm going to come back to the center and stitch to the other end of the dart. 
tie threads here as well. Remember to keep this part of the folded edge of the collar free. So let's go ahead and stitch it now. Okay, so I'm gonna begin stitching here in the middle, back stitch at the beginning, and then tie a knot once you get to the end of the dart. So now that we have the collar sewn onto the neckline, you wanna go ahead and trim right here between these small circles. And I also clipped into these curves right here. That way we can have this seam open. So now we can press our dart going toward the front and we can also press up this seam allowance right here for the front facing. All right, so I just pressed my darts going toward the front. And with your collar, you just wanna double check to make sure you don't have any bumps on your collar. You want it to be nice and straight. So now let's move on to the next step. To begin working on our facing, you wanna go ahead and fuse the interfacing to your facing piece following the manufacturer's instructions. And then you also want to finish off the long unnotched edge of the facing. I finished off mine with my serger and then I folded in that serge stitch and stitched it down. So this is about a quarter of an inch that I have folded in. You can also use bias tape if you have that to finish off your edge. You can use a zigzag stitch um, and also your serger. So those are just some options that you can use to finish off your facing unnotched edge. I also finished off the top edge of my facing with my serger because once we have this sewn into the bodice, this edge is going to meet up with the shoulder seam and I just want it to be a finished edge. So I just wanted to mention that as well. So you go ahead and fuse your interface into your facing piece and finish off the long unnotched edge. Once you do that, then we can take the facing piece to the machine and we're gonna stitch at a 5 8 of an inch stitch along the neck edge from the shoulder to this large circle. So I'm just gonna put a mark pin right here so I know where to stop. I do have my circles here transferred, but I just want to put a pin there so you all can see that you need to make sure you stop right here at the large circle. So let's go ahead and do our 5 8 of an inch stitch now. You want to stitch your other facing the same way. Now that we have the facing stitched around the neck edge, I'm going to clip right up to that inner circle right here, being sure not to clip through my stitching. All right, now that we have them clipped, we can move on to the next step. Next, we're gonna go ahead and grab our bodice and we're going to pin the facings to the bodice, right sides facing and also over the collar. So I'm gonna match up my notches and pin in place and you also want to make, make sure that you match up your circles as well. I'm going to pin through one circle and make sure I'm going through the other one. All right, now that I have the facing pinned on, I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm going to stitch this in sections. So I'm gonna start at this small dot right here and I'm gonna to go to this one and stop back stitch. And then I'm gonna maneuver the fabric a little bit and pick back up with my stitch and then go ahead and stitch down the remainder of the neck edge and the front opening. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side of the facing. I'm gonna work in a small section first. And then once I get here to this circle, I'm gonna back stitch, I'm gonna move the fabric around a little bit to adjust and then pick back up with my stitching and continue on down the front opening. So let's go ahead and sew on our facing now. Make sure that you keep this front opening free while you're sewing. And I'm gonna begin stitching at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and the ends. <laughs> I'm 
going to adjust the fabric around a little bit. I'm going to pick up my stitch right here where I left off, put my needle right back down there, back stitch and continue stitching. Pivot and now sew down the front opening. All right, now that you have your facing sewn on, we want to trim our seam and clip our curves. So next we're going to go ahead and understitch our bodice. With understitching, we normally understitch with the seam allowance facing toward the facing or the waistband or the lining. But for this project, we're going to understitch the bodice. So we want the seam allowance to be facing toward the bodice because once we are all done, we the front lapel is going to fall like this. So you want to make sure that you have your understitching under here. So we again are going to understitch toward the bodice. So let's go ahead and do that now. Alright, so I have my understitching done on both of the fronts as far as I could go. The next step is to go ahead and close up this neck edge here. And we are going to press the seam allowance up into this opening. Make sure that you have clipped those curves right there. And you want to bring that pressed edge right over the seam. And on the outside, we're going to put our pins in it. I'm going to put it right in the seam. Make sure that you catch the pressed edge on the inside. Now let's go ahead and continue doing that. All right, now that we have it all pinned, I have my pins on the outside, we can go to the machine and we can stitch close to the seam line or you can also stitch in the ditch. So let's go ahead and do this stitch now and close up this opening. So now that we have the collar all sewn and closed, we can go ahead and pin the facing to the shoulder seam only and we can go ahead and tack this down. Now that we have our facing tacked down with our shoulder seams, now we can go ahead and put our bodice right sides facing and pin the side seams together. So go ahead and match up your notch and pin in place. Okay, now we can go ahead and stitch our side seams at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Stitch your other side seam the same way and go ahead and finish off your seam. After you have the side seam sewn and you finished off your seams, we can put the bodice to the side and start working on the skirt. To begin working on our skirt, you want to go ahead and do stay stitching along the upper edge of both of your front and your back piece. And I've also gone ahead and finished off my seams. So now with the right sides facing, I'm going to pin at my single notches. Go ahead and pin down both of the side seams. Once you have both side seams pinned, you want to go ahead and stitch in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to begin stitching at the hem and work my way up to the top. And again, this is a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. <laughs> Thank you. 
Go ahead and stitch your other side seam the same way and press your seam open. All right, I have my side seams sewn and I've also pressed them open. The next step is for us to go ahead and grab our facing. And you want to apply fusible interfacing to your facing. I've already done mine. And I also finished off the long unnotched edge of my facing as well. So now I'm going to pin it right sides facing to the front of the skirt, matching up the notches. You should have two notches. Match your notches and pin your facings in place. Go ahead and pin your other facing on the same way. All right, now that we have our facings pinned on, we can go to the machine and stitch them in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Stitch your other facing the same way and then we can trim our seam. Okay, now that I have the facing sewn on, I'm going to trim down my seam. I'm going to trim the other one the same way and once we have both trimmed, we can go back to the machine and we can do under stitching. This time we want to make sure that we have the seam facing toward the facing. So let's go ahead and do our under stitching now. So I just under stitched my facing. Next we're going to put our bodice and skirt right sides facing. So I'm going to turn this one right side out. I'm going to grab my bodice and we're going to open out our facing for our bodice as well and now we're going to pin it to the skirt. You want to match up your seams as well as your notches and pin in place. Now that we have our bodice pinned to our skirt, we can go to the sewing machine and we can stitch it all the way across at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So now that we have the skirt and the bodice stitched together at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, now we are going to stitch again 3 8 of an inch away from this stitch and we're going to do it from this outer notch to this outer notch. So we're not going to take it all the way over here to the end, we're just going to take it from this outer notch all the way around and then back stitch here at this outer notch. So let's go ahead and do our stitch 3 8 of an inch away from the 5 8 of an inch stitch now. Now I'm going to back stitch. All right, now that we have done our second stitch, we can go ahead and grab our piece of elastic and you want to cut it the length of the elastic guide, which is piece 10. So I've cut mine and I have a safety pin right here. I'm going to go ahead and put it on and I'm going to pull the elastic through this casing that we have created. All right, once you get to the end, you want to pull your elastic out. I'm going to put a pin here to hold it in place. I can remove my safety pin. And you want to make sure that you don't lose this elastic over here. So I'm going to gently pull it in. Okay, pull in a little bit more. Okay, great. Now I'm going to pin it right here at that notch. 
Now we can go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch right here in the seam allowance. We're not going to stitch past our 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So we're just going to close up our casing right here and make sure that you catch in the end of your elastic on both ends. So let's go ahead and close up the casing right now. Again, we're only sewing in the seam allowance. Go ahead and close the other side of your casing. All right, now that we have closed off our casing, I have gone ahead and I finished off my seam allowance here. So now I'm going to turn my skirt facing and the bodice facing along with it toward the inside onto itself. And it should meet up right here at that notch, right where our casing begins. And I'm going to pin in place. Again, we are folding the skirt facing toward the inside and bringing the bodice facing with it and pin in place. So now we're going to stitch the seam allowances of our facing together close to the previous stitch. So I'm just going to go up maybe a quarter inch over and I'm just going to stitch close to the previous stitch for our facings only inside the seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now I'm going to go ahead and stitch and I have the edge of my fabric lined up with the half an inch seam allowance. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and stitch the other facing the same way. Alright, so now that we have the facing sewn, I'm going to go ahead and open out my bodice from my skirt. And it should be nice and clean on the inside like this. Now we can go ahead and give our facings a press. Now we can go ahead and put this to the side and start working on our sleeves. For our sleeves, the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and put two rows of e-stitching along the upper edge of our sleeve. I've already done mine and you want to do it between the notches. So I have my two rows of stitching done. The next thing that we're going to do is on the inside of our sleeve, we are going to bring these lines right here together to create our pleat. So I'm going to pin through my circles in the lines, you want to make sure that you're going through the lines and pin it in place. Okay, you go ahead and pin your other sleeve the same way. And now we're going to begin stitching down here at the bottom and we're going to stitch right along the lines up to the top circle and make sure that you back stitch. So let's go ahead and do this stitching now on our sleeve. All right, now that we have our pleat sewn on our sleeve, we are going to press the pleat open flat. So I'm going to just open up my pleat. And I'm gonna press it flat. All right, now that we have it pressed, we want to baste across the top of the pleat as well as down here on the lower edge. So let's go ahead and just baste right across the pleat now. So once you have basted your pleat at the lower edge and up here at the top, now we can go ahead and stitch our sleeve. So with right sides facing, we can go ahead and stitch our sleeve at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. <laughs> Now I'm going to stitch my other sleeve the same way and then I'm going to finish off my edge. 
All right, so I have my sleeve sewn, my sleeve seam, I have it sewn. And I have my seam open. Now you should have transferred some markings that meet up right here on this seam, as well as markings on the pleats. So now we're gonna take our elastic and you want it to be five inches long. And we are going to put it about a quarter of an inch past the circles. So I am have it on the inside like so. And I'm just gonna pin it about a quarter of an inch past the circle. So now I'm gonna to go to the machine and I'm just gonna stitch right down the middle of the elastic, being sure to stretch the elastic as I'm sewing. So let's go ahead and do that for both of our sleeves now. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and stitch the other elastic to the seam of the sleeve the same way and also to the other sleeve. Alright, now that we have both of our elastics sewn on to our sleeves, now you just want to go ahead and form a narrow hem on the end of your sleeve and then we can go ahead and stitch that in place. So let's go ahead and create a narrow hem now on the end of our sleeve and stitch it. All right, now that we have our narrow hem done on our sleeves, we can go ahead and pin them into the dress. So I'm going to grab a sleeve. You want to make sure that the double notch goes to the back and the single notch goes to the front. And I'm going to match up my seam here and pin in place. I'm gonna match up my notches. And now I'm just going to pull on my gathering stitches to ease the sleeve in. All right, once you have your sleeve pinned, you wanna go ahead and stitch it at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, and then we're gonna stitch again an eighth of an inch away from that stitch. So let's go ahead and do our stitching now. All right, now that we have our sleeves sewn in, I am going to press the seam allowance so I can shrink in the fullness some more. And I'm using my pressing hem here for that, that way you can still keep it shape. So now let's go ahead and do our hem. To start working on our hem, you wanna go ahead and try this on first to mark up your hem and where you want your hem to be. So once you have that, go ahead and trim your hem and mark it up. And we are going to fold the facing toward the outside. And wherever you put your marking for your hem to be, you want to go ahead and stitch on that line. I am just gonna stitch at a 5 8 of an inch stitch because I like the length of mine, so I'm just going to hem it. So I'm just gonna stitch across the facing right here at a 5 8 of an inch. But again, wherever you marked for your length to be, wherever you mark that at, you stitch across at that marking. So let's go ahead and do our stitching now. Go ahead and stitch the other side of your facing the same way. All right, now that we have our hem stitched across the lower edge, you wanna go ahead and trim.
I'm going to go ahead and turn it to the inside. Grab your point turner and poke out your corners. All right, once you have your facing turned toward the inside, you want to go ahead and press up your hem. My hem will be 5 eighths of an inch and I'm going to fold in a quarter of an inch and stitch close to the inner edge. So whatever you have marked your hem to be, just fold in a half an inch on the raw edge and you can go ahead and stitch it in place or you can also slip stitch it in place. And also for the front opening edges, we are going to stitch an inch away from the front opening edge. Now I am going to omit that stitch because I just like it being clean without a stitch right here. However, if you want to do your one inch stitch from the front edge, you will stitch all the way down on the skirt only, not on the bodice. So you will start here at the top and you will stitch all the way down. And once you get down here, you will pivot and continue stitching along your hem. So let's go ahead and do our hem now. Again, I'm just going to press up the 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to press in a quarter of an inch and I'm going to stitch close to the inner pressed edge. Once you have your hem sewn in place, you want to give it a good press. And the last thing for us to do is to go ahead and sew on our snap as well as our button and we are all done.